Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm going to be going over how I made this character right here. Um, he's actually pretty simple. Um, it might look a little bit complex, but it's pretty much just a bunch of stuff layered onto a human base mesh and some lighting tricks. So, uh, let's get right into it. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to open our new file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that. I don't know what I changed, but... And I have a human base mesh that I will link in the description below. Um, basically, I'm going to go to that and get that human base. Okay, and I'm going to scale him up. And he's already rigged and everything, so if you want to pose him, you can. Uh, basically, we're going to do a very simple pose on this guy first. And to do that, we're going to make sure the armature is selected. Go over to pose mode over here, and you can see that the armature turns blue. That means that you can pose the bones and you can move them around and shape the guy however you want. So, we're gonna select his little forearm, right? And we're gonna rotate it down to where he's kind of just standing there, like this. Uh, maybe rotate his arms like that, and then we're gonna select his neck bone and just kind of rotate it to where it's like that, maybe looking up a little bit more. Uh, maybe down and then we can just go back to object mode and so we have our pose done for this guy so now what I did for the mask is actually very simple um, basically I just made a quick sculpt using a sphere um, and then added textures and the glowing eyes and glowing mouth so here's how we do that so we're gonna shift a and add a UV sphere we're gonna bring that sphere over here and that's pretty much all we need to do for that. Now for the actual sculpting part, we have this tab over here called sculpting. You can also just go to sculpt mode here, but it's a lot easier in the sculpting tab. So if we go over to the sculpting tab, make sure the UV sphere is selected so you can actually sculpt on it. Go over to the sculpting tab and we can see that we have our UV sphere. You can also um, change the matte cap if you want to like red. Um, I'm just going to leave mine alone. But here's basically what we're going to do. So basically, first we're going to shape the little mask. So if we hit G on our keyboard, this goes into grab mode. What grab mode does is basically what it says. It grabs the vertices and you can move them around. So what we're going to do is first we're going to turn on dynamic topology. Um, that basically means that's going to add faces depending on how close we are. Um, but we don't want that. We don't want it to add more faces depending on how close we are. We just want it to add more faces when it needs it. So. If we go over to the dynamic topology tab and detailing, make sure it's at constant detail. And what that means is that it will add the same amount of faces no matter how far away you are from the mesh. So, for example, if we set it as relative detail, which is at default, we can, if we go back and draw mode, we can see that we have these big faces. But if we get closer, we get these small faces. That's because we're closer or farther away. But we wanted that but at constant detail and the resolution let's set it to twelve ish and we can see that it's a lot better. So uh going back to the grab mode, we're just going to pull this up like this and just make sure it's kind of in the shape of a head. Uh maybe pull these down a little bit. Just kind of get the shape of a head or mask or whatever. Just make sure it looks somewhat like a head. Because we're going to put this on our guy. We can move this back a little bit because we don't really need it. So now what we're going to do is the horns. So basically what I did for the horns is I have symmetry on. And symmetry just basically means that it's going to draw the same thing on the other side of whatever axis you have it on. So if we just give it a little bit to work with right here. So something like this. And then we grab them and then pull them up and then hit X to go back to draw mode and then give it a little bit more to work with. And then we hit G again and then pull them this way and then kind of just make them look a little bit more right. Uh, I'm also going to pull the face in more. Like so. Uh, maybe pull these out, make them a little bigger, and then just do this. 
So now we basically have this uh, with the horns and stuff. Uh, what you can do is you can hit S to go into smoothing and then just kind of smooth these out a little bit. Uh, you might want to add a little bit more detail right here and just smooth it like that. So now we basically have the horns. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go with the eye sockets and mouth. Uh, actually, we don't need a model. On, we don't need to sculpt the mouth because that's a separate model. But we're going to do the eye sockets. So if we go over here to this little clay thumb tool, that's what I used, and hit control, it uses a subtract mode. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Ooh, maybe we need to use the draw mode. Yeah. Uh, so just hit X or go up here to draw, and then you can uh, have your eyes. So we're not going to make them super deep or anything. Just kind of like this, maybe pull them up a little bit here. So where they kind of have that little thing going on uh, where they rise up. And that's basically it. If you want to, you can add a nose type thing, which can be done by just adding a little nub right here and then smoothing it and then right here and pulling it out a little bit and you have a nose a very simple nose but it's a nose uh, if you want nah actually it's a mask you don't need to add nostrils really you can if you want by just going into draw mode and then like doing that but we should leave it alone as it is right now uh, so basically that's our mask pretty much done so what we're gonna go ahead and do is right click on it and click shade smooth that just smooths out the mesh and then we can go ahead and put it on our guy so just resize it and rotate it until it is on the face correctly so uh, resize it a little bit more something like that okay so now we have the mask done um, what we're gonna do is we're going to add the mouth so the mouth is very very easy actually all I did was add a plane and then just bring it over here and scale it down to maybe like that and then I shift D to duplicate it and then RX or RY 90 nope it's RZ 90 so RZ90 rotates at 90 degrees on the Z axis. So we're just going to bring it over here and just add these kind of stitching lines or effect, whatever you want to call it. Don't really know what to call it, but I'm just going to add that. Maybe move these over a little bit so they're more. Okay. So once I have that, what I did was I selected the I selected all these planes. So just like this, and hit Control J to make them into one mesh. So actually, before I do that, I think I made this a little bit too wide. All right, I think we're good now. And just Control G into one mesh to where we have this kind of mouth thing. And then I just gave it an emission material, a white emission material with a value of like 10 okay so first before we add the mouth what we need to do is a few things so uh, you can see for the mouth I've added a few subdivisions on every plane that's just to give us a little bit more room to work with what I can do also is this uh, added there and we could try to do this one of two ways first before we do anything though is if we hit tab on our mask we see that our vertices and faces are everywhere that's not good. So you could do it by hand. You could retopologize re your mesh by hand, but there's a handy feature that's been added under object data, this little triangle vertice thing, where if you go down here to remesh, you can click quad and just quad your flow remesh and then click okay. And it will change all your faces to quads. So we can see that we have these nice neat quads now instead of whatever we had before. And just shade smooth it again. So what we can do, <coughs> excuse me, what we can do is we can either try to use a shrink wrap modifier to see if it'll work. If it doesn't work, we can manually shape the mouth to the face. 
So we're going to try to do a shrink wrap modifier first. And so the way to do that is to add a modifier and then shrink wrap. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. It's really finicky and I don't quite understand it. But if it works for you, you can use it. If it doesn't, you can use our another method. So if we have our mouth selected, uh, we can choose the target to be our face. So you can see that it's all jumbled up right now. So we can change some of the stuff and kind of have it like that. And maybe that would look good. I don't know. It's kind of wonky right here. Um, you can try to change some of the stuff. But I don't think it'll... don't think it'll work. Maybe if I try to rotate it a little bit before. Maybe. Shrink wrap, target this. Okay, that looks a lot better, but we still have that one side. So if we kind of just move it like this. We have that and we can change our offset so we have this now which is not perfect but you can do it uh, the other method is you can just select the vertices go up here to if we go here and select the vertices go up here to proportional editing turn that on and then like move the vertices and just like shape it to the mask but for tutorial purposes I'm just gonna do this because it looks okay ish um, and we don't really need to do a lot more. So now that we have that, what we're going to add is the eyes. So the way I'm doing the eyes, I'm just going to add a UV sphere, and then just put them in the eye sockets. That's that's it. That's that's all you got to do. Just put them in the eye sockets. Um, so just make sure that they're not out too far. Make sure that they're not in too far, because you want them to look like they are the same eyes so like, you don't want something like that for example so something like that to where they're proportional and they're in the eye sockets all the way this one needs to move, move back a little bit more uh, now what we can do is we can shade smooth both these spheres uh, go down to the material tab and give the same material we get the mouth and then click on the other one without a material and then shift click on the one with the material go to this little arrow and click copy material to selected now both eyes have the material so great uh, now what do we do so basically next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to shift a and then add a plane and then bring it up to about his neck right here and then resize it a little bit like this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit tab and then control R and we're just going to subdivide this a lot something like that and subdivide the other side and just make it to where they are squares and those look square enough to me and now what we're going to do is go over here to this physics tab and then add physics for a cloth material now all these we really need to keep the same except for collisions and then go down here and make sure self collisions on um, and then what we gotta do is we gotta go to our armature and then go to group one that's the actual mesh of the guy and then just make him a collision object that way the cloth uh, will hit it and not fall through it so now what we gotta do is we have to hit play and it'll basically be like this so this is just to give them a kind of cloak type thing and then once if your cloth doesn't look good enough you can resize it resubdivide it whatever but what we're going to do first is we're go I think this looks good enough so I'm just going to apply the um uh, whoops not that uh, replay the cloth animation wait for it to be like that select the cloth apply the cloth modifier and then add a subdivision surface to where it's like this so now that we have this, I think the eyes need to be a little bit bigger. Uh, let me just go to sculpting. Just 
just change the eyes to where they're a little bit bigger. And then just resize the spheres. Okay, so now that we have that, we have our cloth. Uh, now we're gonna do some texturing. So for the mask, I'm using a bark material that I got from cc0textures.com. And make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled. Uh, that's really handy. You can just enable it by preferences and then add-ons and just type in Node. And then Node Wrangler is right here. Click it, save it. Um, it's already in Blender. You can just do that. And then once you have that, if you click on your pencil BSDF, you can Control Shift T and it opens this thing. And you can go and select all your maps and stuff. So I used this. And then it already sets up all your principled or PBR texture maps and everything. So you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's a real lifesaver, honestly. Um, so now you have all this. Uh, now what you need to do is you need to uh, UV unwrap this mask. So the lazy way to do it, and the way I always do it, because I'm lazy and I don't like doing hard things, is I just hit tab, hit A to select all the vertices, hit U on my keyboard, and then smart UV project. Uh, that's basically just letting Blender do all the calculations and stuff. And it should look good enough. If it doesn't look good enough, you can look up a UV tutorial on someone who actually knows how to do stuff um, on YouTube. I like Blender Guru or like CG Matter or something. I don't know. Does CG Matter do? I don't know. But anyway, uh, now that we have that unwrapped, what we can do is we can hit A and then do the same thing on the cloth. So make sure that's UV unwrapped and might take a little bit longer because there's more verses and then for the last one we do it on our human figure so we can apply a texture to him so we have our texture applied to our mask now let's use a fabric texture on this little cloth so again I have a texture I'm gonna link all these textures and everything that I use in this project down below uh, so you guys don't have to go and find them uh, because I'm nice like that but yeah so basically I'm just going to scroll down to the fabric material and then should be okay so I'm gonna go ahead and save this right now just save it as tree warrior because that's what I called him and now what we can do is we can apply do the same thing to this guy Charles T and then if I remember it was ground 37 that I used so let me just find that Wherever that was, we thirty-seven. Uh. Might be my other drive. Is it? Alright, well the texture is in my main drive, I guess. Uh, so if we go down, I'm just gonna go extract that thing again. Uh, ground 37. And then extract that to my desktop. Alright, so now we have our ground 37. We can go to it over here just add that and so now if we look in cycles and let's just change this to black we can see that our character is coming together we can see that he has all this and he looks pretty nice so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the details to them, which are the vines and the leaves and everything. So the way I did the vines was very, very simple. Um, basically, I just added a Bezier curve and I just shaped it to where I wanted. So I put one on his shoulder right here and hit tab so you can edit it and just hit G to grab these and rotate them and then 
E to like extrude it. So I just basically did this. And then just kind of put it on its back. Kind of put it like that. And then in geometry, I put the depth up to like that. And then what I did was I converted it to actually before we do that, let me just set up the other vine too. Uh, the other vine, I can't remember exactly where I placed it, but let's just place it on his other shoulder and kind of have it more like loop around type. Kind of like this it's like that and then what I did is I selected them and went to object and then convert to mesh uh, that converts into a mesh so now they have like vertices and faces and stuff Did the same thing with the other one but first what we need to do is we need to make this closer to his body and then object convert to mesh okay so now we have these and I also need to shade to smooth this fabric uh, so what I did for the kind of like rigid bark effect is I just went to sculpting and then I just kind of like oops, Put on dynamic topology make sure it's constant detail 12 No, whoops Maybe it needs to be higher I'm not sure. Yeah. So just put it on like a really high number for these because they kind of need that because the faces aren't like subdivided or anything. And I just basically sculpted uh, for this like vine like texture. It's basically what I did. You don't have to really worry about them back unless you're, uh, you know. Like worried about the back. I did the same thing with the other one here. Sculpting, dynamic topology, 50. And then just sculpting like this. This is just to get like a vine-like texture. Um, you technically don't have to do this, but I want to, so I'm going to do it. And I'm not really worrying about the back because in my render, they're not going to see the back. But if they are, you can add some stuff there. Uh, so now we have these, and I'm going to give them the same texture that I did for the mask. So the mask, mask texture is material 2. I should probably name my materials. It's probably a good thing to do, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to give these material 2. Okay, so now that we have our vines uh, kind of growing on the side, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, first shade smooth that. We're going to add the kind of like leaves and ivy that's growing around them. So the way we're going to do that is we make sure IV Gen is active by going to Edit and Preferences, uh, Add-ons, just type in IV, and you should see Add Curve IV Gen. It comes with Blender, just like Node Wrangler did. Uh, make sure that's selected, um, and then it's turned on. And if we select our mesh right here, we can hit N to open this Properties panel, and then go to Create an IV Generator. So uh, what we can do is we can to just... Uh, change that and then add a new ivy and we see an ivy has been made down here So if we select this and then the roots we can su size it up and Then bring it up here. And I'm going to move This I'm gonna Bring it up and it's basically position it wherever you want. I'm going to position this one kind of smaller Kind of poking through right here kind of poking through right there and then you change the seed change the size a little bit then add a new ivy Oops. add a new ivy it's like this and leaves scale it up uh, I didn't want to do that scale it up rotate it 
just to wherever you think uh, would be a good place to put this ivy. Uh, they're all going to be different. Uh, you can never really get them the same. But just kind of put them wherever you think would be a good fit. Uh, time. This one and this one. And scale it. I didn't want it to be that big. Rotate it like this. And then put that one like maybe there ish. Then maybe give it one more. And just kind of position this one wherever you want to. I'm gonna make this one a little smaller. All right, so now we have his little ivies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two materials for these. Um, we're just going to make base colors for these. Uh, you could use textures and UV unwrap them, but you don't really need to in this render. So if we select, let's say it's leaves, right? And then we add a new texture and then give it a dark greenish, yellowish material. And then turn the roughness kind of down. And basically what we can do is we can select all the leaves. Whoops. Select all the leaves that we have and select the leaves that we applied the material to and then copy material to selected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the roots we're going to select the roots and we're just going to add a brown material so we're just going to go over to orange and then turn it down and adjust it until it's a good brown material. Now we're going to turn the roughness all the way up on this and then do the same thing just uh, select all the roots for the other ones like this and select the root that you apply the material to and then copy the material to select it. So now we have that done. So right now we can look at them and see what is up with lighting. So I'm going to use this change it to like 350 just to test it and then change it to blue. Or actually I'm going to change this one to a more orangish color and I'm add another one over here just duplicate it and then change that one to blue and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane scale it up and then go to tab uh, edit mode and select these two edges hit E and extrude them up and then what I can do is I can add a cube make sure it fills the whole scene Give it a new material, disconnect it from the surface material, add a principal volume, and type in like 0 0.04. And now what we can do is we can view how he looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and save. Uh, change render engine cycles. GPU. And. This needs to be black. And the plain. I'm just going to give this a gray, dark gray material with the roughness all the way up. So now, if you look at it, it should look a lot better. Except for some reason, the texture isn't applied to the guy. Uh, don't really know why, but hey, that happens, I guess. So it's ground 37. So now if we look at him, we should see that he is indeed looking pretty snazzy. So 
Uh, also, what I did was I added a bunch of UV spheres around his head uh, and gave it a green emission effect. And I'm just going to give this an emission with a value of like 5 with a light green. And then also I'm going to set up a camera angle. I'm going to set it up like right here and change it to 1080 by 1080 so it's square and just kind of move the camera to where he is this needs to be brought up. and UV sphere these scattered around his head in a sort of random pattern and if we look I do think that those lights are way too powerful what if I change them to 150 each Yeah, I think that's good. Maybe the mask and everything needs to be kind of changed. like that and I think that is about it um, these vines textured let me see yeah they are all right so I think that is about it that's basically the way that I made um, my tree warrior render uh, so if you guys have any questions make sure to leave them in the comments below hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial uh, I know it's a little bit long and a little bit boring, but if you follow it through, then hopefully you can make something good. So, thanks guys so much for watching. Um, my name is Michael from Falcon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.